Today, my guest is Kathy Hoekstra, and Kathy works for the Mackinac Center for Public Policy and Research. I'm going to introduce you to this very fine person. I'm sure we'll have a very dialogue, a very lively dialogue, and an important discussion. Um, so, Kathy, welcome to the Lansing Connection. Well, thank you so much. Nice to see you, Senator Cassis. It's really good to have you with us, Kathy. Kathy, tell us a little bit about the Mackinac Center and about yourself and how you became one of the principal, um, I wouldn't say reporters, but policy makers at well, the Mackinac Center. Please. Absolutely. Well, the Mackinac Center, for people who aren't familiar with the Mackinac Center, we're a free market-based state-level think tank uh, located in Midland, Michigan. Uh, the Mackinac Center is uh, celebrating, going into its 21st year this year. Um, and the Mackinac Center is a research and education uh, institution uh, that uh, aims to provide free market perspective and free market solutions, limited government solutions to Michigan's problems. And the Mackinac Center does it in many different areas. Uh, we focus on labor issues, fiscal policy, legal uh, policy as well, legislative or statesmanship, um, property rights, uh, things like eminent domain. And my job, I've been there for a little more than a year now, I actually work in the communications department. My title is communications specialist. I do investigative reporting, I do video production, and I do media outreach. So kind of a, a broad brush, um, but we're very excited that the Mackinac Center has been uh, a very loud voice, a very strong proponent of free market principles, limited government principles for so many years. And I think right now the state of Michigan is in a situation where people really need to hear our voice and are craving the information and what it is that we do and for their own benefit. Well, Kathy, I think the timeliness of this is right on. Mm -hmm. We just saw in the Detroit News today and the Free Press mm -hmm. a Pew Report. They're um, an acknowledged um, yes. organization, and they're telling us that things um, for Michigan continue not to be where we want them to be. In fact, pretty bleak. I think the headline in the free press today was Michigan will be among the poor states for years to come, at least the next 15 years. And we don't just sit on this kind of information sure. with the Mackinac Center. Um, and, and if there is a bright spot, I would say that it is the fact that we have such an important, well-renowned think tank think tank mm -hmm. in our midst because it does give optimism if you can provide concrete steps sure. that would lead Michigan forward toward a very successful recovery. The kind of things that maybe we're not doing right now but we could look at and optimistically how that would be a benefit not only in the short term but the long term. Absolutely. And the, um, uh, the Pew Center report that you're talking about, I had the article as well from the Detroit mm -hmm. News. And really what this report has come up with really reaffirms a lot of the uh, ideas that the Mackinac Center has been uh, working on mm -hmm. and researching and, and promoting um, in terms of addressing what was brought up in this report. And uh, just to read a couple of statistics sure. for Please. people who may not be, have not read these articles, um, the, uh, it's a wash, the, the Pew Center on the States is a, is a uh, public policy think tank in Washington, D.C. that analyzed several states, including Michigan. And it concluded leaders here in Michigan have failed to modernize the tax code, have used temporary solutions to resolve budget deficits, and have been slow to diversify its auto-reliant economy. And what you're talking about, you mentioned that things won't, th this report predicts things won't improve for another 15 years. They say it would be 2025 or 2030 before the state's able to replace all the jobs it lost this decade. And that's even if we go back to the um, uh, economic boom of the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. again, just the, the sentence where it talks about using temporary solutions to resolve budget deficits, that uh, Senator Cassis goes right in line with the third of the seven 
uh, uh, principles of sound public policy that the Mackinac Center has put together and uh, you can access it on Mackinac.org, by the way. Yes. Um, but the seven uh, principles of sound public policy, number three um, talks about uh, sound public policy requires that we consider long run effects uh, and all people as opposed to short run effects and a few people. And that's been the mistake or the, um, the trend here in Michigan of what decision makers and policy makers have been doing for a long time. And now, unfortunately, we are seeing what the folks at the Pew Center are seeing. Well, reality really um, has taken a big bite mm -hmm. out of all of us here in Michigan. But it is that reality that mm -hmm. I think not only legislators um, and the administration are coming to grips with as we sit here today, but the general public. Um, and they know that the status quo just no longer will serve Michigan well. Now we're going into 2010, it's just around the corner. And that is going to be a general election year. So many of these discussions that uh, will be bubbling forward and the debates that will occur are going to be very important. Sure. Kathy, you and I came to know each other mm -hmm. as a matter of looking at some of the overall economic development programs right. that Michigan has in place, really to try and get a handle on how well do they serve us. Sure. Have they in the past, in the present, and then going forward, what do we need to look at to, be in, to really ensure that we are getting measured success, not just hope for, but measured right. success, performance that we can attest to. And as you know, uh, very proud of my colleagues and the work that we did uh, and sponsoring the transparency mm -hmm. legislation that now we can really get behind some of the numbers both with Treasury and the Michigan Economic Development Corporation to look at whether the decision, we'll have the information mm -hmm. that will allow us to make better decisions as lawmakers and also shine some sunlight on the public's right to know. Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, as you well know, and a lot of people are familiar with Mackinac Center research on uh, economic development here in Michigan. In particular, um, the Mackinac Center has been a very strong critic of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation and its programs for what you uh, have outlined mm -hmm. in terms of the purported success versus the actual success. Part of the problem is indeed the transparency, mm -hmm. um, the, the information that you're able to get uh, from uh, businesses and from the states. And, and, and what you're talking about is when the state gives uh, tax credits or tax refunds, whatever the, the mm -hmm. you know, carrot may be that's being dangled to try to look, get businesses to come to Michigan um, and measure that against the number of jobs that are actually created versus what the news, uh, the, the press conference said was going to create or the news release. That is definitely a step in the right direction in measuring success. Right. Now our research has found, um, and we had one this summer, mm -hmm. the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, a review and analysis, mm -hmm. which talks about the mega program, Michigan mm -hmm. Economic Growth Authority, the uh, film office and the film incentive program, right. among some of the other programs run by the MEDC. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what our research has found unfortunately is that out of all the jobs that are promised or the jobs that are uh, hyped if you will you know when the announcements are made less than one-third of those jobs are actually created right. um, so and, and that's a little staggering and I, I do think that when you talk about the transparency especially when we get into the film incentive which is where you and I had um, you know initially uh, started being in touch with each other um, it's definitely a step in the right direction um, in terms of measuring success. 